programming done. It must have been really easy because I didn't even need my programming socks. They were high revving the fans, but they came down after a short while last time. So we'll see what they do this time.
steal the time calculation code that I stole off of uh, GitLab anyway. Well, uh, Stack Overflow. And then added milliseconds and uh, days two. That's all I added. And then spent ages being really confused as to why days didn't work, and it was literally because when I print when I was printing out the thing, I thought it was saying oh 309 days. And it was because when I was printing out the thing, um, I I did not put a colon between hours, days and hours. So it was three so it was three days, nine hours, but it was coming out three oh nine on the screen and I was like, why the fuck is it and I start printing it on its own and it's like it's three it, that's correct three fucking God, I spent ten minutes fucking that up. Yeah, I was like three hundred days, my calculation must be wrong. I must have put in the wrong amount of divisors. I thought I could just, you know, add a twenty, add a divide by twenty-four to the hours, and then, then just dump the, the decimals. I've decided that there's absolutely no way. Well, it's mathematically impossible that anyone gets. Uh, more than a year's playtime, I think, because the um, because the DNF comes in at that whatever that time is. So I'd have thought that even if you, because especially with the way you've written the DNF. I assume the game stops you before you go longer than the DNF time, anyway. But the way that you've written the DNF of greater than or equal to the DNF number, there's no way that they can get the DNF. I don't know. It doesn't really matter, it's fine to have uh, counts in whatever. I spat out, the reason I spat out the milliseconds raw as well was partially for testing so I could take my milliseconds raw, but I left the milliseconds in because if I'm going to compare versus someone else's time, we can compare by carefully looking, but just looking raw at the milliseconds would be the easiest way to mathematically compare, like if you're just going to whack, you can whack those two numbers into a calculator and see whose is bigger and by how much. You know, so just dumping the raw, raw milliseconds felt like a reasonable thing to do, and it's fun to have all the numbers of how long you've played. It is now a long list of text, though. It is a pretty, pretty beefy list of text. I don't know what the best way to go about dumping it to a file would be either though. Because it'd be quite fun to just dump it to a time stamped file. But like, do you rewrite, do, do you have it so it prints it to the console? Oh actually! If you're gonna, no, I've just realised it. If you're going to put it into a file, change every single print to file.write and append the the file with the code with the line, and then right at the end, you just print the uh, you take the file and you just print the whole file like cat, and just dump the file. Because I was thinking, oh, you'd have to print the line and then dump it to the file, and that's like two lines for every print line. 
but no, you just print the whole thing. To, you'd write the whole thing to the file and then dump the file at the end. Why do you need to split the code into multiple files? It'd add complexity and more things for people to download. This is one of those things where it doesn't matter how complex it gets, it's better to keep it all in one file so that you can just give somebody one singular file and say, run that. Like the, the most, the only thing else we'd do is, uh, if, we, if it needed it, would be to start writing in definitions start writing functions rather than writing the whole thing loose. Which if it gets any more complicated would probably be needed. But I don't think I care to make... I was thinking about like what I said yesterday about how much detail do we need. I don't think I care to make it any more detailed. Adding rain would add... I don't, there's got to be a better way to do what I did with the uh, making it do bonus tracks and that. Adding rain to that would cause another set of nested for loops. Having nine nested for loops effectively. Like having the input before the script runs so you can decide to just print it to the terminal plate. Oh right, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah, that's true. If you want it in a file, you can just pipe the output to... I mean, if you want to write, if you want to write that shit, and make it work, because you are going to have to come up with a better way to do, to do that sorting than what I did today. like the way that it's sorted in, the way it's sorting it at the minute with the having to check every group for every group sort of thing is a fucking mess <laughs> to the point where somehow I managed to end up with 1980 tracks completed at one point where I was messing around with trying to make it slightly cleaner and run within itself run within itself so it didn't need to run twice sort of thing and I ended up with 1980 fucking tracks completed which is incredibly strange I'm not quite sure how I did that what it was adding up
You need Ferris. I mean... You can rewrite it in Rust if you want. Yeah. No, because it's Rust, there'd be a load of stuff in crates, so you wouldn't have to download a 3 gig project. Because half the stuff would be done in crates. One thing I do like about the Python we've written... We haven't needed to import anything yet. Not even standard libraries. Good luck with making that, considering that uh, the entirety of the Linux kernel, I think, is less than 10 gig. And most of that is the .git history. For the past 30 years. It's like 2.8 gig. Entire Linux kernel if you remove the git history. No, we haven't even imported stuff that comes with Python. I don't know if it's like just the, the certain things that I've written in the past, but you have to import random. Like, there's a bunch of weird little things that you randomly have to import in Python, but somehow we've just managed to scrape by avoiding. No, we shouldn't need any third-party dependencies at all. Shouldn't need anything downloaded. To be fair, every piece of functionality is now in the code. I don't... Like, I haven't thought of anything more than what's already there. It's just more options are the only things we've thought of. more options for you to be able to download uh, for you to be able to say like rain group b only group b finland only that sort of thing and the code for that is there it just has to be 
plugged in. Actually, you could do Group B Finland without nesting anymore. You just have to find some clean way of getting user input and having the um, groups list, the, the whatever you fucking call it, matrix. That list Yeah, it actually isn't a massive problem to do that. It's just how do you get the user input and keep the long list of if statements. <laughs> and then all you've got to do is add, I might add rain to the list. My brain's too frazzled, to be honest. Adding rain would be possible, and then everything else would just be getting the user input. Are the McDonald's adverts uh, for working at McDonald's? Because someone said in a stream the other day that it was for working at McDonald's. Shit. I was like, ah, this is going to go perfectly. The point of McDonald's adverts isn't to make you want McDonald's right now, it's to make you remember that McDonald's exists the next time that you are hungry and want something. That you'll go, oh, McDonald's. Rather than, oh, Burger King. Or whoever. Hashtag not sponsored. Hashtag just don't eat shit food shit places that are a bit shit, really. Go to like a local joint, because they're a little bit better. Definitely not sponsored by Subway either. Honestly, I like the Chippy is probably the best place. I don't know if this is Chippy's. Basically, like it's still greasy and shit, but at least the potato's actually there. And like the, the problem some people have with like cafes or burger joints or whatever is you have to wait 
it's not fast enough for them. But McDonald's is getting slower and slower. And I haven't been there in a while, but I it just... People are saying you have to pre-order on the app to get it pretty much when you walk in. It's like, well, that's pointless then. Um, but Chippies, they got it on the hot plates. You can get a jumbo sausage and some chips. The only problem with Chippies, one of the biggest problems with Chippies though, is the portion sizes. They, because of the old advertising standards thing, the portion sizes are proper meals, because Chippies are meant to be meals rather than just grab it as you walk past. So you, and they, the, like there's, most chippies won't let you get just like half a cone of chips. Half a cone of chips for a quid would be banging. You know, when you're just out and about. At Fish and Chip Shop, for those from the home counties, Chips like potato fries, if you're not familiar. See, I'm sup I I was surprised when I went to Germany to find that you didn't have anything even close to a chippy. Because one of the chippy specials, something you can only get at a chippy and nowhere else, because you can get chips at restaurants, you know. Battered sausage covered in curry. That that sounds a very German thing. Yeah, kebab places are. Yeah, the chippy does the kebabs. Not the good kebabs, not like shish kebab or uh, rice. You go to an Indian for those. Usually just an actual Indian bloke uh, out of his garage, to be honest, around here. They're phenomenal. <laughs> the worse the place looks, the better the food when it comes to Indian food more run down and shitty if you can't actually read the name of the place on the outside of the building then that is going to be some fucking good curry and also they the ones around me understand that basically where I live it's half Indians half English and the Indians understand that the English can't take the heat so they do really nice, low heat vegetable curries. Because they're not stupid and know that if they blow your fucking head off with a curry, you're never going to go back. I imagine, but they also respect you enough to give you the same menu because apparently there's some place. Ah, oh, fuck's sake, the green thing. Apparently there's some places where you'll get uh, a different menu. <laughs> If you're Indian or if you're white. And it's like, fuck's sake. They respect you enough to give you the menu with the, uh, with the proper food on it. And they won't, they won't sneer at you when you just want a pack of onion margie. Chinese places near me are the worst for confusing menu options. So they all seem to have like... It's not just a menu. You know? It's this weird thing of... It's not just a menu. It's like... Here's, here's a list of things you can have. And then... Options to have inside of the things you can have. It just gets very confusing. Yeah, 
Yeah, I have had some properly spicy stuff because when I played cricket, Indians, they like their cricket. And they used to do a big bowls of curry and rice for the end of year meals and it was like these Indian granddads of the, of the chaps we played with. Um, and usually what would happen is the British families would bring sweets, sweet stuff and puddings and the Indians would bring the main meal cooking rice, cooking curry and that, you know they, they were honest with us they were like you probably don't want to eat this one little 10 year old kid this one's basically here for the Indian granddads around but you'd always try some and have your head blown off to look cool and you'd pretty much you'd pretty much plate it up just like a tiny spoonful of the hottest one you could f that, that was going with twice as much rice as you'd normally ever have with a curry and you'd basically go and stand near any sort of cream filled pudding anything that might help the burning <laughs> after but the difference is like, I had a, a shit chicken fajita wrap I don't know where it came from it was three days out of date in the fridge so I thought fuck it I'll eat it it's not that bad I'm really hoping that the UK doesn't get rid of the decent food hygiene laws that basically requires food to go out of date way before it actually goes out of date because if they ever do I will eat things that are mouldy not that I haven't done that like many times before but I will just start eating things that are mouldy because I'll go well it's only five days past its sell by date so it's fine it's, fi it's only five days past the best before it's the best before just fucking sniff it but anyway this thing was crap it burned my mouth from the from the spiciness but it had no taste to the point where the little bits of sweet corn in there I could taste them more than I could taste the actual chicken bits with the flavour like you know it's bad when you can taste a fucking raw half raw kidney bean more than you can taste the chicken but yet your mouth is just going this is hot it was fine it wasn't out of date perfectly edible sandwich wrap thing other than the fact that it tasted like bollocks but In terms of safety, perfectly edible. I haven't died yet. When I do die, I'll let you know. I'll let you know what got me. Mouldy chicken fajita. <laughs> this is the dangerous part of the year for me though. Because I don't check the sell by date or the, the date on milk and stuff like that. I just use it till it starts smelling off. But this is the point of the year where you can't leave it outside. You, you have to remember that you can't leave it out of the fridge for any period of time because it will die before you get back to it. Whereas for most of the year you could just kind of... Oh, I forgot to put the milk back in the fridge and it's fine. I was really not intending to stream this long today. <laughs> yep. 
Yeah, it was... This was meant to be stream both Kenyas and then fuck off. Go do something else for a bit and come back and then later stream Indonesia and Australia so I can get onto group B tomorrow. I spent like an hour and a half programming the the rally thing that I will likely not use. Actually, I need to check that it printed out correctly when I did bonus because I should have all bonus vehicles things. That should be 100%. See, there's certain things as well that we're actually not going to know if they're not working. Either until I finish this and have a guaranteed complete set. Or... Just never. Like, how do we know that the time is working? theory it should be but I'm not sitting there adding up 168 fucking ah clever shit well this is going to be a very fast time I don't test things properly at all. I just go, looks like it's working. It's not spitting out anything weird. To my knowledge, it could be spitting out really weird shit. Could be completely off. As long as the code runs, and as long as it makes the same mathematical errors for everybody,
There it is. Can you suck these nuts? Forty-one, fifty-three, three-one-three. Cheers, Turbo.